Hey, what is up everybody? I feel like we're zoomed. No, we're not. We're not zoomed in. All right. So I just got done fishing, filming a bunch of stuff for the ACC Crappie Sips giveaway. You can check that video out. I think I'll post this after that one. If not, then I'm just going to edit this whole part out. So yesterday I waxed the one side of my boat and I figured, you know what, I'm going to do a video on this. And by no means am I a professional at this, but I needed to remove some oxidation. It's not heavy, it's, it's just light on the boat. Um, but I asked a bunch of people on different forums kind of how to go about it. So here's what they said, and this is basically what I did. Step one, wet sanding. Okay, so for the wet sanding part, um, because I didn't have that heavy of oxidation, I only have, I only used two different grits. Um, I started with the 1000 grit and then I bumped it. The finishing one was the 2000 grit. Now I know I've seen some videos if you have heavier oxidation, some guys are starting to, with 800 grit, then they go to 1200 and then they finish off with something like a 2000 or 3000 or, or something higher uh, than this 2000. Um, but I didn't have that much. So just for the wet sanding part, I'm just gonna use these two. And of course, a sanding sponge and some water and a little bit of dish soap. The dish soap I've heard um, loosens up any of the, the clear coat stuff or any of the oxidation that gets caught in the sandpaper. Um, so, and it, I, I've done the, the one side of my boat already and it, it works. Um, so I do recommend using a little bit of dish soap. It helps the sandpaper glide a little better. Um, plus you can, you can definitely tell when the, uh, the gel coat kind of evens up or smooths up after you go from this to this. Um, this. This takes out the scratches that your lower grit will put into the gel coat. So this one, you'll definitely notice that soap will really help smooth out areas when you're using your higher end grits. So I did want to make note before I start sanding, I didn't see a whole lot of videos talking about this, of like how do you know when to stop sanding? Um, so on this boat, it's slightly oxidized. Um, if it's heavier oxidized boat, I'll talk about that first. If it's a heavier oxidized boat, you'll start sanding, you'll see kind of a brown or, or maybe a black, or depending on the color that you're gonna see, that's the color that's gonna come out. Um, but the dirt will come out as brown. Now once you hit the actual gel coat, once you hit the actual gel coat, then it comes out as white. Um, so that's how I knew kind of okay, I can stop sanding with the 1000 grit, which is my first grit that I was using, and then I can start, I can wipe that down with a damp towel, clear that off, and then start with the 2000 grit. And the 2000 grit, I knew how to stop. That was just based on feel after doing the one side of my boat. It felt a lot smoother when I, after I had sanded an area with a 2000 grit than when I started with the 2000 grit. I think that's just more of a feel thing. And, you can kind of wipe it off and feel it with your hand if you got any scratches or bumps that you need to take care of. Um, so that's how I took care of it. Okay, so to start off, I'm just gonna start with this, this back corner here. And I, as you can see, first thing you probably wanna do is wipe it down. I haven't wiped it down yet. So you guys, there's a little bit of dirt here but as you can see, it's, it's some oxidation going on. It's not heavy, it's just light. That's why I'm only using 1,000 grit to start, and then I'm gonna go to 2,000 to get that all done. I've done the back. Uh, I gotta wipe it down though. I've already had the boat out once, um, but I gotta wipe it down. So let's just start by uh, wiping it down with just a wet rag, or I guess you can spray on some hull cleaner, some Starbright, I'll show you that. Um, spray that on here just to get all the grit off. So once we'll get that all sanded up, and then we'll jump into the actual waxing part. All right, so I forgot to mention when I started this, make sure you, this is the 3M, make sure you get the wet or dry sandpaper, uh, not just the dry sandpaper, you gotta be able to get this wet. Also, these come in uh, sheets that look about this size. I tear them in half so they actually fit around the wet sponge like that. Uh, make sure you always keep this nice and wet. You don't want to burn through your gel coat. All right, so to start this off, uh, we're gonna clean this off first. Hold on. I uh, recommend using a scratch-free towel. I'm just gonna take a little bit of soap water here. Just gonna wipe this off. 
get whatever the heavy dirt is off so you're not sanding it into your gel coat. As soon as I wiped it off, the oxidation came back. So definitely needs to be wet sanded and waxed a little bit. So let's start with the first wet sanding. This is the thousand grit wet sand, wet dry sandpaper. I'm just gonna dip it a little bit in the water here. Slowly sand in circles. If you got a power sander, this would probably be a lot easier. Um, just be careful on the RPMs, probably stick with lower RPMs. Um, so you just don't want to burn through your gel coat. And always make sure it stays wet. Definitely takes a little bit of elbow grease, unless you got a power sander or something like that. But um, as you notice here, it's starting to get a little white, and that's a combination of both the gel coat coming, the, the oxidation coming out of the gel coat, and then the little bit of dish soap that we put in this. So, I'm gonna give it a little more, a little more sanding here, and then I'll go to, I'm gonna wipe it down and then go to the 2000 grit. Now I'm gonna wipe it down. whatever dirt's left on there and it's definitely gonna look a little hazy because you just sanded it okay so don't worry about that and then we're gonna go to you can actually feel it it's gonna look it's gonna feel a little rough might feel some scratches in there but that's gonna come out with the 2000 grit which is what we're gonna use next all right so now that we kind of wiped it off a little bit cleaned it up we're gonna apply the 200 grit sandpaper wet dry and just kind of smooth out any scratches that the 1000 grit left behind and really clean this up. So again, dip it in your soap water. And that 2000 grit will really start to feel smooth once you've uh, cleaned up any scratches that the 1000 grit left. So it's really starting to glide a lot easier right now. So. I'm going to sand it a little bit more and then I'm going to wipe it down and we can start the whole rubbing compound, polishing compound and the wax to really make this thing shine up. All right, it looks like I got a little on the lens, so I'm going to clean the lens off and then I'm going to wipe this down, get this cleared up. So I'll do that first and I'll clean the lens off. Now there'll still be a haze and that's okay. Because that'll get taken care of with our compound, with our compound and our polishing, and then the final wax phase. So I'm gonna clean that lens off. So now that we got this cleaned up, I do have to say a couple things. You preferably want to do this on a cloudy day or in a garage. It's more it's going on Memorial Day weekend here, so I just I wanted to get this thing shined up. But uh, that's what you probably want to do. Also, if you're wet sanding, you probably don't want to do it in a driveway that you care about because the uh, the white the white stuff that drips off from the gel coat may or may not stain. I haven't figured that one out yet. Um, I know I'm going to have to wash this trailer because it's got a bunch of white powder on it. I think it'll wash off, but just be careful. And so let's get into the actual waxing process, how to polish this gel coat back up to make it shine again. So I got three different products here from Turtle Wax. The first one is the Rubbing Compound. It's a heavy duty cleaner. The next one I'm going to use is the Polishing Compound. And then I'm gonna finally get this thing all nice and shiny with the hard shell. This is the wax that Turtle Shell has. Um, and also make sure they, they have these scratch-free towels. You can buy those along with it. I do rec recommend those, get those damp. That helps you clear off any compound, the rubbing and the polishing compound. And then I recommend getting a micro fleece towel um, to rub off the waxing compound, that, that, that the final phase of this thing. Um, it really helps shine this thing up. So let's just start with the rubbing compound here. Also, you might need to buy some of these uh, pads that come, these don't come with it. The, the hard shell comes with a polishing pad, but you'll probably need to pick up some other polishing pads unless you have them. So the rubbing compound, it's the brown one. Also it says rubbing compound on the front. Just gonna scoop some on there like that. And I'm gonna smear it across here and slowly rub it in. Buff this thing in. 
if you have a uh, an, elect an electric buffer sander, whatever you want to call them, I've seen some videos. I do recommend looking up the instructions on what what to use them, on what RPMs to use them at. Um, some of them I've heard anywhere between 600 to start with, and then you work your way up to 11 to 1200 RPMs uh, to really rub this stuff in both the the rubbing compound and the polishing compound. But again, I'd look up the specs that I'm sure Turtle Wax has a, something on their website of what RPMs to run. So if you're using a, an electric buffer um, or a power buffer, I do recommend looking up the RPMs you should run. This, I'm not too worried about burning through the gel coat by hand as long as I get a bunch of this on here. I'm just gonna rub it in until it kind of clears up a little bit. It'll still be brown and I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit, not too long. And then I'll wipe it off with a damp towel, one of those scratch free towels. All right, this is fairly dry now, so I'm just gonna take a wet, uh, I'm just gonna take a damp cloth here and wipe it off. And it should come off fairly easily with a wet towel. All right, now we're gonna start with the polishing compound. And this is the white one looks white on the inside and again you're gonna have to get a polishing pad for these I think they're I think you can buy them in a three pack they're like four or five bucks something like that and we're gonna do the same process that we did the, the rubbing compound take some of it put on your polishing pad there and rub it in all right and then you want to let this set up to dry a little bit and do the same thing with the uh, the damp towel wipe it off and then we'll get to the final phase of the uh, Put the wax on. Well now that this is all dried up we're gonna wa wipe it down with that damp rag again. Right it looks better already but let's uh, put the final touches the waxing the turtle hard shell. It comes in this the turtle hard shell. Um, it does come with a polishing pad like I said so all you're gonna do is you're gonna take that polishing pad Put a little bit of wax on there and we'll rub it in just like you did the other comp rubbing compound and the polishing compound. Now you're going to let this set up to dry and when it dry, it usually took it took me about five to ten minutes to let this set up to get a nice haze before we wipe it off with our micro fleece towel. So I'm going to let this get to a nice haze. Might do a time lapse, I don't really know. You know what? Cute time lapse. All right, nice little time lapse there for you. So this is really hazed up on me. It's dry. I guess it's just starting to fall off with my fingers here. So I'm gonna take a micro fleece towel, and just rub it off. You might wanna damp it, damp the towel a little bit. This looks like it's coming off pretty good. And it's putting a really nice shine on it. I can already tell. I haven't even got all the wax off yet. I mean, you can already tell the difference between this top and the bottom that I haven't even done anything to yet. But I'll, uh, I'll remove this tag and get you a really good look at before and after. Okay, so let's get a before and after look here. There you go, that's better. So you can really tell the difference. I know there's this white line here, but this is the oxidized side. It's not heavy oxidation, but it's enough to really make, make a difference. Look at that. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna finish up the rest of this boat. Uh, hopefully this helps, this little tutorial, I guess you'd call it, I don't know. It's the first time ever doing it, actually second time. I did the, the one side of the boat already, so this is my second time doing this. Um, I will say, if you have a heavily oxidized boat, got a bee or something on me, if you have a heavily oxidized boat, the wet sanding portion, it's gonna take a lot longer than what I did. Okay, I only have a slightly oxidized kind of gel coat so it didn't take a whole lot of wet sanding and it, it just took a little bit honestly I probably could have gotten away with just the rubbing compound polishing and the waxing part um, but wet sanding does help clear up that gel coat if you do have a heavy gel coat it's gonna take some time so definitely plan your day out it might take an entire weekend um, I know this side of the boat that I did already I mean, that, this, that side of the boat took me a good four, four to five hours. So 
definitely plan your weekend out or during the winter time if you don't want to do it during the summer. Um, it's going to take some time. So hopefully this helps. As always, be sure to like and share that video. If you're not a subscriber, below the video there's a red subscribe button. You can click that. Also at the end of the video you'll see my face holding the crappie. You can click on that to subscribe. Also, if you want to win a kid's rod, check out the link below. Watch that video. Do what that video says. Enter a chance to win a kid's fishing rod by acccrappiesticks.com. Alright, we'll see ya.